Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Yvonne. I have a YouTube channel. That's Chef Kiziwi. Today we are going to have an interview with my father. Welcome. My name is Amenya Nyakundi. Uh, I'm Yvonne's father. Uh, I have a family of uh, three kids. Of course, the mother. Uh, uh, Yvonne is our firstborn. Then uh, she has two brothers. Nick, Collas, Nick, and John. Uh, I love them equally, all of them. Uh, we are a very close family, and uh, we are friends since they were small kids to date. Uh, today I'm here uh, to talk uh, about uh, my daughter, Ivo. Uh, how she has come up since the day uh, we discovered that she had lost uh, hearing because initially she was real, she was born uh, with full hearing. So, Dad, I want to ask you a question. Um, I, can you explain to me what happened when I became deaf? Uh, thank you so much, Yvonne, for that question uh, and for the audience. Uh, I uh, would like to uh, say that, uh, as I said earlier, Yvonne was born with full hearing. Fortunately, Yvonne has never been sick. The only problem she had is this hearing. And uh, having been and being a close father, I realized that whenever she wanted to watch TV, she started sitting close to the TV, unlike before. So I initially thought that she was being cheeky and naughty because she could pull the table, sit on the TV. There was a, a program called Music Time at that time, those years. And she really loved the music. She could dance in that music. And I used to pinch her so that uh, she moves from the TV. But slowly, I started realizing that she used to put her left ear to the TV more than the right one. Then I started to wonder, there must be a problem. But uh, she still had a hearing, but partial. And it was very difficult to detect. Because you call her, she could respond. But sometimes she couldn't respond. Then I started realizing that when I knock, sometimes she hears, sometimes she doesn't hear. So uh, that kind of uh, disability is very, very difficult to detect. But for us, as a family, I detected it very early, at I think two years, tried all we can. There was a, a unit in Aga Khan for the hearing uh, loss. They could not do anything. There was another unit in Kenyatta. They couldn't do anything. So um, it became a problem. And uh, since she had never been sick, it was very difficult for us to to get the root cause of the hearing loss. But uh, that notwithstanding, uh, we decided to get a hearing aid. And then uh, be close to her and uh, work with her. Now I became more sensitive. I couldn't let her go alone. So uh, the journey we started, at that time, at an early age. And then she accepted. First of all, 
she accepted that she has a problem. So as for the cause, to date, even the doctors cannot explain. But it happens. Not only in hearing, sometimes others lose sight. Sometimes uh, people uh, get lame. You find one of their legs becomes short when you are, you are a grown-up. So this is a challenge, but it's for parents to be close to the children uh, so that they can be able to see. And this is the early detection which made us take her to school and uh, she completed her studies. And so for how she got unwell, that is the story of her being unwell. Number two, when I lost my hearing, how did you feel? Uh, <clears throat> to me, Yvonne is as if she has never lost her hearing. Because uh, I immediately, as a young parent, being the firstborn, I just embraced it. Uh, and I worked with her. I, looked for, I started to look for schools where she could uh, integrate. And uh, because of that positiveness in me, and because it has never affected me to date, I just knew that she's okay. It's just a disability, like any other disability. So I continued loving her, even now, to date, that uh, I became her best friend. I used to make sure that uh, when she wakes up in the morning, I'm there. Then I look for a school uh, which was uh, integrated at race course, uh, where she could learn sign language and uh, also speech. That was in our primary. Then I continued looking for schools. I go to another school called Kambui, uh, primary school, where she was also integrated. But all along, I am the one who made sure that her hearing aid was serviced. It was in working condition. I make sure that her hearing, uh, her, her ears are washed. And I was the one who used to make sure to see that she has done her homework. I all the time was there for the teachers, to be friends with the teachers. She did very well in primary school. Then she went to Kambui Girls Second School. Uh, I continued with that uh, togetherness and closeness and the monitoring and encouraging her and telling her that uh, she just has a, a small disability, but she's not unable to do. So I created some confidence in her to tell her that she can do anything any other person can do. I have never felt anything, even my the brothers, even the mother. Nobody feels like she's uh, disabled. Actually, that's one of the reasons why we are not able to, to, to talk to her in sign language. Because to me, she's still okay. So it has never affected my relationship, my affection, my love for her. She's just okay to me because uh, she drives me. She went to school, the driving school. Without my knowledge, she got her driving license. She brought it here. When I want, she can drive me to wherever I want. And she does everything. In, in reality, as a parent, as a parent, I have never felt anything. I have never felt anything at all. And to me, it sometimes doesn't occur that she has that problem. Because I, the way I see her, uh, is only that I talk with her bass, and she can't pick my bass. But uh, the brothers who can talk with a small tone, she can pick some words. And also her attitude, the attitude that she has a positive attitude. So it has never been a big problem to me that uh, she has this hearing problem. It has never been. So I took it positively and I'm still positive about it because she has a very bright future. She, because she has seen the, the problems that uh, many children who are disabled will go through. Some parents uh, lock their children at home because of a small disability, not knowing that this they have potential. 
So I still want to say it has not been a problem to me. And I've never felt anything. Even her, she has never felt anything. And that's how we are. So number three, how were you able to know which school to take me? It was a challenge because um, uh, there weren't many schools at that time of special needs. So, um, and uh, apparently, maybe some parents who have got deaf children don't take them to school. So it was always uh, not difficult for me to take her to primary school. I placed her in a primary school, as I'd said earlier, uh, Rescos Primary, then I took her to Kambui Primary School. The teachers in Kambui were wonderful. Then there was a time I took her to Reverend Mohoro in Nyeri. Uh, we found that there were challenges there. That was uh, in later on in secondary school. So we made a decision to integrate her in a normal secondary school. We took her to Kambui Girls Secondary School. But uh, Yvonne has always known what she wants in life. She always wanted to be chef all the time. So even when she finished uh, from four, as a family, it was not difficult for us to know what she wants. She wanted to be chef. She refused any other recommendation. Then we put her, first of all, we put her through computer classes because computer is everything uh, for, for whoever wants to advance. Then after that, we took her to college. She did a diploma in uh, food production and management. Uh, soon after, uh, she, she did another certificate. So, question four. I know it's not easy to take care of a deaf child. So could you explain to us the challenges that you went through? It is said that there is a challenge in raising up uh, a deaf child, but uh, I personally didn't find it as a challenge. Because remember, as I earlier said, I realized this problem in Yvonne quite early, and I embraced it. And I've worked with her uh, step by step. I know what she likes. I consult her a lot. And uh, I try to listen to her and I create time for her. So it's, I've not seen a challenge at all, at all, at all, at all. And uh, I don't anticipate because now she can take care of herself. She can consult, I can consult. And she has brothers and uh, the mother is there. So as a family, it has not been a challenge to take care of Yvonne. What are the challenges um, in uh, searching for employment? Coming to the issue of uh, job uh, search, uh, there was a challenge in her getting a job because you know that uh, in many organizations uh, they need experience. So having a hearing impairment was another added problem for her to, 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 to get a job. But uh, fortunately, one time she was called for an interview to Sarova. This one, uh, she got through a friend who knew the disability that she had. She went in the morning for the interview. In the afternoon, she had a letter of appointment. But unfortunately, they posted her to Masai Mara. As a parent, your daughter has a hearing problem and taken to Masai Mara, I almost refused because I was thinking that she's going to be eaten by lions. It was very difficult. But we prayed about it as a family. It was very difficult for us to release her. But we prayed about her, that and we said, God has given us this girl takes care of her every day. So one morning we woke up at 4 a.m. We drove out to Masai Mara Sarova. We never slept that night when we came back. 
It was very difficult. But we slept. When we woke up in the morning, we called, we found she's okay. And then she continued, and people loved her. And uh, as much as Mara is far, we used to visit her many times until we knew that now she's integrated. So that is the one challenge which we, are on, we encountered as parents for getting a job. I'd like you to maybe advise parents with deaf children um, and different disabilities, maybe deaf, blind. These parents face through, especially maybe children who are deaf. I tend, uh, my advice is this, because this I can tell you, because I have, I have been through it. And uh, wherever my daughter was in schools, I realized that most parents who come for school meetings are the mothers of these children. I was surprised because it happened when I was in West Coast. It happened when I was uh, in Kambui Primary. It happened in the Reverend Mhoro. All along, it's like these parents, the men, the fathers are not there for these children. And I used to talk a lot to these uh, children. I used to talk a lot uh, to these parents. In fact, there was a time we started uh, our welfare for the parents of deaf children so that we can sensitize to people. And I want to advise these parents like this. These are very able children. You will be very surprised. They are very able children. What they need is guidance. Don't lock your children home that they are unable to do. Give them tasks because they are wonderful children. And I repeat to those parents who are hiding their children in the house, let them out, support them, give them opportunities. And I want to refer them to one lady called Helen Keller. Go and Google about Helen Keller. Helen Keller was deaf, blind. Deaf, blind. But she was able to write a lot of books. She achieved a lot more than able children. So if Helen Keller, deaf, blind, could achieve what she did achieve, I wonder those children that you are hiding in your houses, what they can be able to achieve. So my advice to you, if you are watching this video, please support them. You can get in contact with us to show you if you are not able, we can guide you how to do it. Thank you very much for that question, Yvonne. Um, what recommendations can you give the government of Kenya? Uh, in positions, we have seen uh, different people being given positions. We have seen blind being given positions. We have people with albinism being given positions. We have seen people uh, with walking challenges being given positions. But we have not been able to see a hearing impaired person in a position in society. How long is it going to take for the government of Kenya to realize that even these people who have hearing challenges, they also need to be seen, they also need to be heard, and especially a lady. I've seen men, I've not seen a lady in such a position. So my advice to the Republic of Kenya and the government is to take note, especially the Commission for Gender and Equality, to pick this thing up and make sure that these people are represented because there are so many of them and they need representation. Thank you very much, Yvonne, for organizing this forum. And I know through this forum there will be more and we are ready for those people who want to ask, talk to them. You can like the channel, you can follow us, and we shall be able to be guiding you and give you other advice. Thank you very much. So I want to tell Dad something. I'm so blessed to have you as my father. Thank you for everything you have done for me. May the Lord bless you. I love you.
thank you very much, uh, my daughter Yvonne. Uh, we are very proud of you. Uh, you have done a good job. You have not let us down. You are an example to so many, even when you are in school. We love you very much, and Daddy loves you so much. And I will forever stand by you day and night. I will work with you this year because you have shown initiative. By the way, even this channel, YouTube, she started her own. I was surprised. She sent me a link and I was in the sitting room. I see something coming in the WhatsApp. She didn't tell me. I found that I was surprised. So thank you very much. I'm proud. I love you and God bless you. Bye bye, viewers. Yeah, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Thank you for watching. Bye.